Hi, my name is Gabor Sabo, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, refactoring Perl code uh, in the next 20 minutes. Uh, I, I would like to apologize. I might need to sit down because I, I'll try to stand, but my leg really hurts, so I might need to sit down and then continue the talk from uh, in sitting. So just a warning: it's 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 a sort of a meta talk. I don't I won't go into to uh, code a little bit. I will show, but but that's not uh, the main issue. First of all, I would like to uh, talk about what's actually what is refactoring? So there's a defi definition. Yeah, you can see the, the, the slide. So there's a definition from Martin Floor. Ba basically, uh, you have a piece of code you inherited probably from someone. You maybe you wrote yourself, and uh, you would like to improve the internal layout of the code. You uh, change something to make it more maintainable. Uh, with a change that doesn't change the actual behavior of the code, and that's, that's, that's refactoring. But if you want to really look at what really refactoring is, is um, so that's, that's the theory, and then when people talk about refactoring, uh, they start uh, doing the refactoring the, the way that it's uh, described in, the, in, that in that quote, but then soon uh, either they make a, a mistake, so they introduce a new bug, which is, well, not refactoring anymore, uh, but sometimes they just find out that, oh, here is a bug that I, during the refactoring, I just found a, a recognized the bug and how to fix it. So I just uh, fix it uh, while I'm doing this. And that point, they are, that's not really refactoring anymore. Uh, and that's one of the fears uh, people who, who fear refactoring think that, oh, okay, this can be, lead to all kind of uh, unwanted changes, even if they are um, sort of good things, uh, fixing bugs. So if you look at what is refactoring, that's a small example. You have a code base, you have a variable that someone gave it the precious name $X. Uh, that, that means a lot to everyone who's reading this code. And then you read the code again, and you thought about it a lot, and now you came up with a much better name. So let's say, sorry? Let's say you change it to Y, yeah. <laughs> then you read a bit more, the, more about the code, and then uh, then you find out that it's actually something like the, the mortgage interest rate that uh, uh, needs to be paid or, or charged or whatever. So making uh, this variable much longer doesn't really matter, doesn't, it's not really a problem if it makes it the code readable. That, it also, that can also help you avoid some comments uh, that just explains, okay, do, this dollar $x is the mortgage rate, whatever. So it's much better to have it in variable, especially because that comment will only appear in one place, in the, de the definition of the variable, uh, not where you use it. And then if your code is uh, like many, uh, in many places the, the code is like big, many hundreds of lines of code, then line 357, you won't, need, you won't know, know what $X is, but if you change the name to some good name, it's much better. So you start doing this refactoring because you've heard it's, it's good and, and, and you have all kinds of questions. So how will you know, for example, that you have not broken anything? Well, partially, actually, what, what in the previous talk was mentioned uh, is testing. And um, the issue is what kind of testing you're, uh, you, you do. So especially when you have a huge code base that, has been written by, that was written by someone else or, or by you, but without thinking about testing, what you do, what you can do is write what's, uh, what's called ac acceptance testing. So testing from the outside world. You can't really write unit testing. It's also probably wasteful. The way to know whether a refactoring uh, didn't break, broke or, or didn't break any code is by writing lots of lots of tests and then hope that you have a decent coverage of your code base. So that's one thing. And then sense, how, how do you know that you're done? Any idea? How do you know that you're done with refactoring? You are never done, right, yeah, so you're never done. And that means that it can't be really done as many things that, many, many people think that, okay, we code for two years and now we allocate three days for refactoring. That's not how, it, how things work or can work. <coughs> this, this can only work as a process. So you do some coding and then you immediately <coughs> start uh, refactoring, sorry. <coughs> So that's another thing. Um, and the last, is it worth it? Is it worth refactoring? 
And that's a really difficult question. Um, probably you can't really answer not upfront and probably not, not even after that. But it's a, it's a, if you think about it, what is refactoring? It's an investment. In an in, it's an investment of a long-term investment. So when you do the refactoring, you have certain cost because you take, it takes time to do the refactoring. And you have a certain risk that you take, that you might introduce some bugs and um, other things. So that's the risk and the, and the, and the immediate cost. And the long term, you have some kind of a profit. The profit of uh, making, being, uh, making it easier to introduce further changes, fixing other bugs later on, or adding new features. So that's, the, that's sort of the profit. And then you, can, then you can actually also think about some kind of a risk that you're avoiding. The problem that we, it's really, really difficult. So maybe we can sort of measure the cost, the immediate cost, but we can't measure neither the risk, not the immediate risk, and not, not the future um, reduced risk, and not, not the future profit. So it's, it's more like a, a black magic in, in that uh, thing, not really, more like an art and not so much a, a science. I don't know about researchers that can really go into this. So a couple of tools about with refactoring, for refactoring, um, who's using Eclipse e Epic here? So it has a couple of uh, tools for refactoring Perl code. Not, not a lot, it has a couple of tools. A Padre, the Perl IDE, so who knows what Padre stands for? Okay, so it stands for the Perl Application Development and Refactoring Environment. That was the idea, that, that was the original idea, to make it an editor that is useful for both for beginners and to allow us to, to do refactoring. Now, while I'm the original developer of Padre, I, I have to say that we haven't got really, really far in there. Um, it's way less than what I was hoping for, uh, for in automatic uh, refactoring. That's the same with, with, uh, with Epic. Uh, both of these, uh, the, so the tools that are in, Ecl in Epic, in Eclipse, are mostly in a module on CPAN called Dev Devil uh, Refactor, and the stuff that uh, Padre added are mostly in this module the PPIX editor tools, which, with the idea that people can integrate these uh, tools for automatic refactoring as a standalone command line tool that has been started in the PPIX editor tools, actually. Or you can integrate it with other editors. So you could integrate it with VI or Emacs or whatever editor you would like, because that's just a, a command line tool, and then it will take your code and replace it with the refactored one. So let's go to a couple of examples of, on, on refactoring. One of them is rename variable, just to see the, the, the issues. One of them is the rename, renaming variables. For, so for example, you have a, an at y, um, and we'll see two solutions uh, if this works. So one of them is the easy solution, and the, one, the other one is the correct solution. <laughs> uh, the, the easy solution is that just to write a regular expression and then replace all the occurrences <laughs> of at y uh, with some variable that, ex that really has a good name. So what about when you have a dollars as an um, element of, a, of an array? What, what about uh, the index of that array, the, the highest index? Uh, what if it's a package variable declared by, by R or, or, or use words or somewhere else? And what if it is used from the outside world? Uh, besides that, if it's a lexical variable, it might be defined several times in the same go code. And you might want only to replace one of the lexical areas and not all of them. So these are issues that, uh, problem that are problematic. The correct use is, and I don't know why is it here, this is the next slide. So the correct use is, the, is, the PP, is using PPI. And the module I mentioned, uh, the PPIX editor tools, actually wraps and uses PPI and provides this kind of refactoring. So replacing variable, even if it's a, if it's a lexical cope and, and stuff. Obviously, it can't deal with uh, cases when the, the variable is a, is a package variable and is accessed from the outside world uh, unless you actually control the outside world. So within a company, within a single project or several projects, but within a company, that might work. But if you have a code base that might be used by others, by people that you can't see their code, that's a problem. Then, then if they, they might use the, that um, variable, you will never find it. Their, their code just will start behaving different, differently. Another one is renaming a subroutine. 
It's actually, I think it's easier, you just find all the places where the subroutine, well, the place where it was declared and all the places where it was used. Um, if it's in the same code base, that's relatively easy. But even if you don't know about that, maybe someone from outside, from the outside world is using that subroutine, so someone who's, you're not controlling the, the code base, then you can install an alias to that subroutine and you can decide about some kind of a deprecation policy. So setting the, the, the old name and to, to warn and call the, the new name, and then after a while, even removing that. So that's, that there is a policy, but of course you have to think about it how long. And that would lead a little bit me back to the point of when I asked, when I said actually that refactoring is a long-term investment. The question I thought about is how long? So, if, sorry? 10 minutes left. 10 minutes, what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah, so the question how long is uh, the long-term investment? And, uh, and that's actually an interesting point that I wanted to talk earlier, but I forgot about it. So the investment is, it, there's a huge difference between management and the programmers in their view of, of time frame. Management usually, is looking for immediately re immediate results. The higher up you are in the management, you are looking usually more immediate results. Partially because, uh, because of pressure, partially because of uh, pressure from, from high, even higher management, uh, partially because you think that by the time the profit comes in from this refactoring, I won't be here. So uh, the lower you are in, in this hierarchy, Usually you think about, okay, I'll probably be around when I will have to use this code again and, and make more changes. So you will uh, be more ready to, to make these changes, to make this investment, because you see the, the possibilities of, your, of that profit later on. Uh, and that's a tension. I don't really have a good solution for resolving it, except of making the refactoring without calling it refactoring. Mm. Another, yeah, sorry? A question? Comment? Uh, not, really. not really, okay. Um, at the end I will have time for questions or comments. Another uh, idea of, re another possibility for refactoring is uniting subroutines. Now that I love because I go, in, go to all kind of companies that have used the ancient art of copy-paste for creating more and more. <laughs> I, once I worked for a company that they had automated copy-paste. <laughs> but they like automation. Uh, the thing is then, then you have lots of lots of functions that sometimes are identical, sometimes are almost identical, sometimes are called the same name in different places, sometimes they have different name. How do you find them? How do you make sure that, that when you're uniting two of these, they are actually really the same? Or how do you parameterize them to to eliminate the duplication, even if they are not exactly the same. But that's an idea, something to, to do. Oh, code. Some code, so people will be satisfied. So I love this, uh, the, love this construct, the unless not available or, or, or something. And it can be just changed to a more positive way of thinking. <laughs> uh, the other thing is um, you have this code base where you have the if something, and then code, 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 and then you have an else, in that case, you just return. You don't do any special thing, or maybe you do some little thing, but you usually just return. And then maybe you have some more code. And that's, that's easily refactored, you can just return early, right? You can rewrite that code, comes much shorter, return immediately if that condition... Uh, <laughs> no, that's an introduction to your lightning talk. <laughs> but, if you, if you, who, who read his, who read the best practices um, of Damien Conway? One? Okay, I just don't see. Okay, that's okay. also good. So many people read it, and so you can recognize that this is one of the, the things he's talking about, right? Um, and you can actually find these things with Perl Critic. Okay, and that's one of the, the, the tools that, to find places where you could refactor your code. So you don't have to go and, and look for five minutes. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> so, 
So per critic is the, is the, is the, is the tool with the, with the extensions to find places where you can, uh, where you might improve your code by refactoring. There is a, and I forgot what is the name, there is an extension for per critic that will measure the complexity of your functions. Not necessarily the length, it also takes in account uh, how many conditions you have and so on. So if you find complex subroutines, these are the places where to uh, clean things up. Uh, so Perlcritic has a two-step uh, system. The first, system, first thing is Perlcritic can help you locate the problem. The second step is that you refactor it. Manually, unfortunately, though I really, really hope that one day we'll have a tool that uses this basis of uh, Perlcritic to automatically refactor some of the issues. So it already found it, why not fix it? And any conclusion here? Well, one of them is just don't be afraid of management. They will tell you don't refactor, it's dangerous, it's uh, whatever, but you know that for yourself, you need it. Because you'll have to maintain that code no matter, and the manager won't be there anymore. And you still have to maintain that code. And then write tests, so whatever, and uh, just frequently do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have two more minutes for questions. Yes? Sorry? Yes, me too. Looking for a module that will do that. <laughs> so the, the, lay, the, the, the framework, the PPIX editor tools is there. And that would be a good, good place probably to add more of these refactorings because once there, these refactorings, for example, uniting uh, subroutines, uh, gets into that tool, then it can, that can be an easily make it available in Padre and basically any other editor that would, would like to use it. So, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna fix it because it's refactoring, I know. Mm -hmm. But you're still gonna touch your code. Yeah, so and, and although I think that Pro Critic is good in the sense of uh, pointing out things that are weak in the program, they're not necessarily broken. No no uh, uh, it so it doesn't uh, uh, refactoring is not refactoring is not fixing things that are broken. Refactoring is improving your code base. And refactoring well, itself is Yeah, so that should be your focus. Yeah, that's that's I, I hear this this um, um, whatever uh, many people t t say the, the same thing that okay the, the, don't refactor only refactor when you really really need to change the code. Uh, basically to say what works don't touch it, right? right? So I have a translation for this that what works don't touch it is that wait till it stops working <laughs> and then you do it in pa in panic, right? Yeah. You are, because when you need to change it, it's either because you just found a bug that uh, you're losing $50,000 a minute. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, but you, you, can't, you don't have time to refactor at that time. Then, you t then they tell you, now fix it right now or you're fired or whatever. Or I am fired because I'm your manager, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse for you. Uh, or because you, they need a feature right now. It's again, usually not, it may be not that urgent as a, as a bug that you're, because of that you're losing money. But it's usually when you have, you need a new feature, you don't have the time to refactor. Mm -hmm. So. Like one thing, refactoring also means that you learn to know the code much better. Surely someone else wrote it. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, thanks uh, Tux. What about the uh, role of, uh, say, a code review? Doing a code review of somebody else's, and you suggest refracting. Is that a good time? Mm. Or are you worried about it? It's. It's. I, I don't have. A, I don't have a clear cut answer for. For usually, probably <laughs> to these questions because it's. A, it very much depends on, on the code base, mm -hmm. 
on your relationship to your manager. <laughs> Uh, stuff like this, so it's, it's, it's not like something, it's not just a technical issue, yeah. it's also a lot of, I have zero minutes, so thank you very much. <laughs>